Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Ridden and today I'm really excited about this video. I'm going to show you how to make chocolate all the way from the cocoa bean to the bar. Now if you can't get hold of cocoa beans, I'll also show you how to make it using cocoa powder as well. If you want to make it using the beans, the first thing you'll need to do is buy some cocoa beans. And you can buy them raw like these ones that I bought when I was in Mexico. And beans from all around the world have different flavors. Most of the chocolate that you have tasted will have been made from one variety of cocoa beans only. And there are so many different chocolate flavors. So make sure you source some different beans from different places around the world. When the beans are raw like this they have a reddish tinge and they're firm and you can't break the shell off them. So the first thing we need to do is roast them. Spread them out in a single layer on a lined baking tray and look through the tray and take out any that are shriveled or don't look good and we want to just get rid of those and keep the good looking ones. And roasting them just brings out the chocolate flavor and smell, but it also releases the shell from the bean so that we can get it off. The easiest way for you to buy a small quantity of cocoa beans is to buy from a bean to bar chocolate maker. And I'll put a list on this week's blog post on howtocookthat.net of some from all around the world for you. Preheat your oven to 54 degrees C or 130F, and then put the beans in and immediately turn the heat up to 121C or 250F. Put your timer on for exactly 15 minutes. And once the timer goes, I want you to turn the oven back down to 50 degrees C or 120F and open the oven door for a minute just to let it rapidly cool down. Then close the door and leave them in there for another 12 minutes. Now they should be done, take them out of the oven and let them cool for five minutes. You can also buy beans that are already roasted like these ones and I got these from a chocolate maker in Australia. These beans were grown in Somalia and they have a completely different taste to the Mexican ones. Step two, you need to remove the shell. Now you can do this by hand, which I think for a small quantity like this is definitely the easiest way to do it. Just gently twist the bean and then remove the shell bits. And the other way you can do this is you can crush the beans using a rolling pin and then tip them into a tray or a bowl and gently blow with a hairdryer to remove the lighter shells. I found that method really messy and not as effective as doing it by hand. I also found the shells on the freshly roasted beans were much easier to remove than the ones on the beans that I bought already roasted. So if you can source raw cocoa beans, buy those ones and roast them yourself. Then you'll be left with a pile of thin shells and a bowl of cocoa nibs. You can also buy cocoa nibs from the shops and if you've bought them like that and if they say they're raw then you just need to spread them on a tray and roast them for about 10 minutes at 100 degrees C or 212 F. These cocoa nibs are from Peru these ones so we're going to make three different chocolates. Step three is to mill your beans and make them finer. Now I'm using a blender for this step and unless you're filming, make sure you keep the lid on or you're gonna get cocoa bean bits all over your bench top. Once that is reasonably fine, tip it into a bowl and microwave it for about 30 seconds. And this is gonna to start to melt the cocoa butter that's in the beans. Cocoa beans are about 50% cocoa butter and then tip that back into the blender and add your powdered sugar. Now this needs to be pure icing sugar with no added cornstarch. If you can't find that, use normal white sugar instead and blend that first on its own to break it down into a powder. The next step is grinding. Now all I have for this is a mortar and pestle. So my chocolate is not gonna be anywhere near as smooth as the chocolate you buy in the shops. You can buy a chocolate grinder which has a turning stone wheel and you leave that on for several hours to break down the chocolate particle size. Commercial chocolate factories use big steel rollers to crush it down to a tiny 20 microns. And to give you an idea of just how small that is, it's about half the size of the particles in your powdered or icing sugar. But that tiny particle size in your chocolate is what makes it feel so smooth in your mouth and it also makes it taste creamier because the chocolate particles can get right in where your taste buds are on your tongue. So keep grinding it until your arm hurts knowing that you're not going to get it as fine as in the shops. And the more you crush it, you'll notice the moisture it becomes as you're releasing more of that cocoa butter from the bean. If you have a chocolate grinder, eventually it will become liquid just on its own. But because we don't, we're going to need to add some extra cocoa butter. Just melt that in the microwave and pour it in. 
then grind it some more and you've got chocolate. At this point, the commercial chocolate is then conched, which means it's stirred while it's warm and melted. And sometimes they conch it for days at a time just to get rid of any acidy flavors to it. Now, we don't have a conching machine. I'm not going to stand here and stir it for three days. So all we're going to do is temper it and pour it into our molds. I have a video explaining all the different ways that you can temper chocolate at home. My favorite is using the freeze dried cocoa powder and I'll show you that in the tempering video. And tempering just makes the cocoa butter set firm at room temperature instead of being soft. Leave that bar at room temperature to set and once it is ready, just tip it out of the mold and you've got a bar of homemade dark chocolate. Now, because you're making it yourself, you can vary the recipe. For the next block, I'm gonna use cocoa nibs, cocoa butter and cocoa powder. Now cocoa nibs are made of cocoa butter and cocoa powder or rather cocoa powder comes from them. But by adding them separately, you can change the proportions in your bar of chocolate. We're also using icing sugar and the seeds from a vanilla bean. These proportions are about the same as you'll find in a lint 80% dark chocolate bar. And I'll put all the weights for this on the howtocookthat.net website for you. Put it all in the blender or a food processor and blend it until it's fine. Then warm up those crumbs in the microwave and you'll get a liquid. Blend that for a couple more minutes to get it as smooth as you can and then temper it and mold it. And you've got your very dark chocolate. For milk chocolate, you'll need cocoa nibs, cocoa butter, sugar and milk powder. Blend it up then grind it some more and mold it. Now, in my opinion, the milk chocolate really needs a proper chocolate grinder, but they cost between $300 and $800. So if you're just doing it to have a go at making your own, don't bother investing in that expense. Now, if you can't get cocoa beans, they are made up, as I said, of about 50% cocoa powder and 50% cocoa butter. So you can swap them out in any of these recipes. Just melt your cocoa butter, mix in the icing sugar and the cocoa powder. Now remember, even this will not be as smooth as your store-bought chocolate because the powders have about double the particle size that you're used to feeling when you buy commercial chocolate. So which one tastes best? We have milk chocolate, Mexican dark chocolate, and Peruvian extra dark. I really like the Mexican dark chocolate. It has more of a nutty flavor to it than the other beans do, and it's not super sweet. The milk is of course the sweetest, and I think it illustrates the particle size as well, because you can see the little dots of cocoa bean in it. So they don't have the smoothness of the store-bought chocolate. Definitely give it a go making your own at home and get a couple of different types of beans so that you can see the different flavors that they have. Subscribe to How to Cook That for more cakes, chocolates and desserts. Click here to go to the video on how to temper chocolate, here for last week's Inside Out cake and here for all my other videos and here to go to the howtocookthat.net website to get all of the weights that you need for making your chocolate. Have a great week and I'll see you all on Friday.